everybody, my name is Chris Petty and I am one of the proud instructors here at DubSpot in New York City. I teach the Reason classes as well as the Ableton classes and I'm one of the contributors to the curriculum. And today you have the honor and pleasure, I hope, of getting a brief glimpse into one of the advanced sound design classes with Reason. So as part of today's lesson, we're going to learn how to make a wavetable bass synth lead sound with Thor. Thor is able to do multiple types of sound synthesis at the oscillator level. So I'm going to switch my analog oscillator to a wavetable oscillator. If you're not completely familiar with what the idea of wavetable synthesis is, think of it as a strip of similar sounding samples that increase in harmonic content as we move the position knob. So on my basic analog oscillator wavetable here, I'm simply gonna hold down the key and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweep from what sounds like a sine wave to a triangle to a square to a saw. So wavetable synthesis is actually one of the very popular techniques for modern sound production in modern electronic dance music. And I'm going to show you how to create a wavetable based synth lead patch today. So let me just make some settings for my volume envelope so that I have a full gate on, gate off message. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch to another wavetable. Thor possesses a bunch of different wavetables. I'm going to choose this mixed waves one wavetable. And let's give a quick listen to what this sounds like so we can get an idea of what we might wanna do with it. So while I'm holding down the key, I'm gonna move my position knob. Let's actually change the octave range on that to make it a little bit deeper. So that's pretty cool. That's exactly what I want it to be doing, but I don't want to be controlling the position knob with a real-time control or with my mouse. I want it to actually do it on its own. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to route the mod envelope here, which is kind of like an auxiliary envelope inside Thor to control my position knob on the wavetable oscillator. So it's very easy. Down at the bottom, I have a modulation matrix inside Thor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose mod envelope as my source. And from my destination, I'm going to choose oscillator one position. I'm then going to increase the amount that the mod envelope is affecting the position knob. And I'm just gonna put a slight attack on my mod envelope so that it's got a little bit of room to move so that it's not instantaneously changing when I depress the key. So now when I press the key. So let's increase the amount a little bit more to make it a little bit more drastic. So as you can start to hear, we've got this morphing, shifting kind of sound. Why stop at one though? So I'm gonna add a second oscillator into the mixture here and I'm gonna choose another wavetable oscillator. This time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a different one from the list. Um, I'm gonna to go to this wavetable called Strong Harmonics. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the octave range here so that it's a little bit deeper. And let's just route oscillator two through filter one and shut oscillator one off so that we can hear oscillator two. So this one's a little bit harsher, a little bit stronger. Let's listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so what I wanna do with this one is, I want this position knob to move, but I wanna have a level of consistency with my sound. So I'm gonna use the same mod envelope here to control that same position knob on the second oscillator, but this time, what I'm going to do, after I get this routed, is I'm gonna set this to negative values so that it's moving in the opposite direction of the other position knob. So I'm setting this one a little bit higher, and now if I strike the key on this, and if I mix the two of them together. Okay, so let's add one more oscillator into the mixture. This time I'm gonna take another wavetable one, but I'm gonna leave this at the basic analog wavetable and I'm gonna use a sine wave. I'm gonna leave this in position one. I don't need to have any movement going on in this one. What I wanna do is I wanna use this to keep the anchor for the actual tone so that when it plays against the other sounds, we can hear a definite pitch and it doesn't just sound like this morphing, shifting kind of sound. Um, and it actually produces a playable patch. So if I strike the keys now, let's just see if the octave range is correct on this.
Okay, so the sound is really starting to take shape. Let's add some real-time control sources here to do some different things. So one of the things that we might wanna do is we might wanna make the filter wobble up and down, like what we hear in dubstep and electro tracks and drum and bass. So the effect is like this. So in order to set that up, to control this knob here, I'm gonna route LFO1 in my matrix to control filter one frequency. So I'm gonna to go to LFO1 and I'm gonna set it to filter one frequency and I'm gonna turn the amount up. I'm also gonna bring my filter frequency range down here a little bit so it's got some room to move. And if I strike the key, so I'm just gonna increase the amount on that a little bit more also. Now, on my LFO, what I want to do is I want to set this to key sync so that it re-triggers the start of the waveform each time I strike the key. I also want to set tempo sync so that it can sync to the tempo of my beats and whatever else is going on. So I'm going to set this to a 16th note triplet and let's change this to a triangle wave. And if I strike the key now, Now this is cool, but I might want to make the sound more dynamic. And what I mean by that is, is that giving myself some real-time controls to be able to engage the wobble or not have the wobble on. So in my matrix down here, I have a scale function and the scale function allows me to set up a real-time control source to control whatever is happening with the source and destination. So I'm going to go to my performance scale amount and I'm going to set it to mod wheel. I'm going to set this to 100% and now we're not going to hear this wobble until I engage the mod wheel. Okay, so the sound is really starting to take shape now, but I'm not gonna stop with this. I wanna distort and I wanna overblow the sound a little bit. So one of the uh, components inside Thor's structure is a wave shaper. So I'm gonna turn this on for those of you that aren't familiar with wave shaping. Basically, it's a very powerful form of distortion synthesis that can completely alter, twist, and mangle the sound around. So I'm gonna set this to hard clip, and I'm just gonna mess with my drive amount here to find something that sounds appropriate. Almost there. We just have a couple more things to do. Thor allows us to run three filters simultaneously, and the first two can be run in either a series mode, which means the output of the first one is connected to the input of the second one, or for what I'm gonna do for this example, I can run them in parallel mode. And what parallel mode is gonna do is think of it as two separate signal paths where all of the oscillators are going through two independent filters. So I'm gonna choose a state variable, which is basically gonna allow me to do 12 decibel drop per octave on the filter. And I'm gonna choose a bandpass filter for this. And if I play the sound back now with the bandpass filter. Okay, so again, the same thing here. I want to set the LFO up to control the filter frequency, but I'm gonna scale it again from the mod envelope. So I'm just gonna repeat the same steps here for filter two, set it to frequency, turn the amount up to, we'll say 87, keep it consistent with the other one or close. And again, I'm going to route the mod wheel to engage this. So now if I play the sound back, okay, so we're almost there. The last thing I wanna do is I want to be able to change the rate of this wobble in real time. And if we take a look at the top of Thor, Thor has assignable rotaries and buttons. So what I want to do is I want to make rotary one control LFO rate. Actually, we can do that cooler. We can write wobble rate. And notice I am writing in caps locks because I'm screaming at the top of my lungs too. So it's very simple. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to another source and the source that I'm going to choose this time is going to be for modifiers rotary one. And I'm going to set rotary one to control LFO one rate. And now if I engage an amount here, and I play this back with the wobble engaged. And there you have it. Any questions? 
So we're very proud of the Reason program here at DubSpot in New York City, and we've actually custom tailored it to be like no other program anywhere else from any other school. Students that come here will become masters of the program. They'll become completely proficient in composition, sound design, music synthesis, and ultimately find and create their own sound and take it to the next level. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.